Your IDEs are not exempt from this. Every piece of software you use today is about to become invisible. You won't interact with databases, APIs, or interfaces directly anymore. AI agents will handle it all. We're shifting from user-friendly software to agent-friendly infrastructure. Who is that? Oh, marketing guy. Well, let's hear it from an actual developer. Prediction, AI will replace most web app UIs. Why? Because nobody wants your UI, they just want results. Another developer, AI-first apps are coming if they aren't already here. Natural language processing is the UX of the future. Finally, Felix over here says, interfaces will fundamentally shrink. And he has a nice little graphic here. Then, now, future, <laughs> one text box. And we've already seen this happening. If this is the long-term trend, then the ID and the terminal are dead. The near-term reality is that our dev environments will be probably somewhere in between, a mix. Lately, I've been seeing Warp gradually gaining traction with developers. It's a replacement for the tired old terminal we as devs actually need to use. Whether you're on Mac OS, Linux, or PowerShell on Windows. You want to time a command in Mac or Linux? It's just time. What's it on a PC? Oh, uh, measure command parentheses and then my command. And Warp actually works and looks exactly the same on all those platforms. And it just got some next level powers. I partnered with Warp to get the scoop on their latest features. And at first I was kind of skeptical, but after seeing some of the stuff it's gonna offer, this may be the beginning of an entirely new way to code. For a couple months before making this video, I've been using Warp for free and without even logging in and creating an account, you know, just to see how far I can take it. And I immediately saw its benefits as a terminal replacement. Now my daily driver is a Mac and I immediately noticed the terminal replacement benefits here. And this was before I even got into any of the new features. Now this is just peanuts. This is barely scratching the surface, but check this out. I type in my command that I use sometimes, find, and it has completion right in the terminal. This is a kind of command that uh, I, somehow know how to use but i don't always know and i can just complete it by pressing the arrow and there we go now if i want to change something on that regular terminal i'd need to go back one step at a time or maybe two words at a time or jump to the beginning of the line those are my options here i can just select a parameter that i don't like and delete it kind of like an editor i don't know what i had against that parameter nothing if i want to undo that i can just do command z and undo my deletion. It's just like an editor, basically. Except here, I'm editing commands and I can execute them right in line. Boom. <laughs> Check this out. FFmpeg, no more going to ChatGPT and looking for specific FFmpeg commands. I use FFmpeg a lot. And this thing just knows the commands and can help me with what I need right there. So that's just completion. That's just baby stories. We'll see some real power in a bit. You also have blocks. So every time you execute a command, it creates a new block. And you have block level history that you can go back and see what you've executed before. There's me doing some FF probe stuff right there. Probably checking to see if a video is 4K or not. My ngrok commands everything is there it remembers everything and this right here multi-line if you do this at a terminal you'd have to go one line at a time if you want to go back up not here it's block level so this is pretty cool if i go up i'm on the previous command which makes sense and if i want to edit this command I can just edit it just like that. And of course it comes with other convenience features like native tabs. You can split panes right, you can split panes down, you can split panes left and right. Configure this however you want. And each one of these of course has its own little terminal with its own little section. This is like a terminal on steroids. Everything in here is GPU accelerated, so everything is quick. You have multi-cursor selection, instant syntax highlighting. All these things work offline and they turn warp into to a polished IDE-like experience before you even touch agent mode. Now, what the heck is this agent mode? Now, to get to level two, you can use Warp as an ADE or agent development environment. I know. I kind of cringed when I first heard that term, but you might see it being popularized soon, so might as well be ready for it. MCP. I wasn't ready for that. Now months flew by and I'm just getting into it. Don't be like me. Get ahead of the curve. IDEs will evolve into something new. What's that? ADEs. Ugh. 
I'll get used to it. To use the agent, Warp relies on LLMs, of course, which usually cost money. But for you and for me, without even signing up, you get a weekly batch of free AI requests. And if you need more, there is a paid plan. And for local LLMs, which is one of the top requested features, I spoke to the CEO and he assures me that it is coming soon. For this part, I actually want to have it do something useful. So I got this LLM inference calculator on my GitHub and I just got an issue, well, four days ago. Sorry. This person is asking if uh, we can implement dark mode in it. Good idea. So I already have this local. Let's say I want to run git pull rebase, but I forgot the exact syntax. I start typing what I think is the right command and of course, it's wrong. But look at this. The agent instantly suggests the correct command. All I have to do is press arrow and enter and boom. It just works. All right, agent mode. How does that work? Where do I turn that on? Well, as soon as I start typing, this automatically turns into agent mode when it detects that this is not a command. There's a subtle visual cue when that happens. We get a little sparklies. Normal mode, agent mode. You can even speak to it if you want. Now, I was trying to implement a dark mode, light mode toggle, so I typed that in, literally. Implement a dark mode, light mode toggle. And the agent understands what I mean. It analyzes the project. It's not a very complicated code base, so I figured this would be an easy way to get into it. Now, surprisingly, the other agents I tested this with actually struggled with dark mode, light mode toggle. We'll see how it does here. This is looking pretty good. It figured out all the different files it needed to change change and stepping me through the files one at a time, it actually gives me the code right in line in these blocks that I can edit. And this part is great. It automatically starts the dev server for me when it's done with all the changes. That's something even online agents don't do for you. You're kind of on your own for that. But here it's a terminal. So not only can you have the agent that does it for you, but you run your commands right in here as well. All right, let's check the app. Okay, let's go. Dark mode. That's a nice little toggle. The toggle looks pretty nice. And it works mostly for the most part. It works. It looks pretty good, actually. It's missing this one section. But for the most part, it got it. That one section, there's always something, right, with these AI agents. But let's see if we can fix it. First, I got to locate what element that is. And it's the class CSS class app. Oh, there we go. It's got a background color of white. We need to tell the agent about that. Now I get a little summary of what the agent did. Great. That was good, but you missed one. The dot app class still has a white background in dark mode. Now it's cool because it remembers the context of the entire conversation. It's this whole block right here with the uh, purple little border here. That's the entire block of my agent work. And there it goes, it's doing it. Now I can apply edits one at a time and it's probably good to do that as you're checking, you have the ability to check every single step or if you really trust it, there's a little auto approval button. Once I press that button, everything just goes. I'm gonna trust the agent from now on to go ahead and implement the rest. All right. Let's check this one more time. NPM run dev. This time I did it manually. Let's see what we got. Refresh. We have a new port, ladies and gentlemen. That happens. It's okay. Let's check it. Dark mode, light mode. Hey, it works. <laughs> nice. That's actually pretty impressive. It did the whole thing. Now, once it's ready, I tell it to commit the changes. Yeah, let's check the status here. I want to do this using the agent. I don't want to do this manually because I don't remember Git and how to use it. <laughs> so let's do that. Add the changes to Git and commit. There we go. I'm just going to talk to my agent from now on and have it do things for me. Nobody's ever going to remember any commands in the future anyway. There it goes. Git add, Git status, Git commit, and wrote a perfectly nice little commit message right there. Look at that. And Git status just to make sure everything is good to go. And then I'll just do a Git push. Yeah, I'm doing this manually. It's okay. I, I like the pleasure of pushing things out manually. No agent is going to take that from me. All right. I've deployed this to Savala. Just checking GitHub. And there it is. One minute ago was my change. That's correct. This should automatically rebuild and deploy on my Savala site. There's that commit. It was successfully rebuilt. And there's my running calculator with a new dark mode, light mode toggle. <laughs> nice. My inference calculator now has a fully working dark mode toggle. Built, deployed, and running. And that was like... 15 minutes. This has been implemented. Close with comment. Now I did all that without even logging in. If I take a look at my settings and my AI section, there's my usage requests, 43 out of 50. I get 50 free requests per week and it resets every week. Of course, if you want more, there is a paid plan for this. And I believe that they're working on raising that limit as far as I can tell because you can blow through that pretty easily. I hope they do. Even though this is a sponsored video, 
I, I'm gonna leave a little bit of criticism here. <laughs> we need more. We need more requests, please. Oh, and local LLMs too. Now, now if you want more requests right now, there is the preview version of Warp, and it's a slightly different icon. You can see it right here. Now, this one, it's a preview, so they do want to log a few things just to make sure everything's working smoothly for the next version. So you do have to log into this one, but in exchange right now, you're getting 150 requests per week. You know what the trick is? Get both of them and then you get 200. So that's Warp, definitely check it out. I've been enjoying using it because I use Linux, Windows, and Mac, and I use Warp on all three of them now. There's gonna be a link down below, and if there's any deals, I'll mention it in the description as well. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.